We remember you, dear reader. Even if you do not remember us. After the original's cliffhanger ending, finally returning to Moss's storybook world is a wonderful and long-awaited treat. Who wouldn't want to assist an adorable mouse in VR, helping them take down some fearsome bosses and overcome platforming challenges to save the world? Moss Book 2 wastes no time, kicking off moments after the first game's ending and building upon much of what made it so memorable, even when the aging PSVR tech it's currently confined to can't quite keep up. While you should probably play the original Moss first, Book 2 still manages to be a welcoming sequel for newcomers. Told like a fairy tale, it has you controlling both a mouse named Quill and the human-sized reader flipping through her story yet again, this time as she's hunted down by a winged tyrant called Tylan. Like before, this isn't necessarily the strongest story, but it's a follow-up that at least improves on other aspects like world-building. That said, Book 2's intriguing late-game revelations may once again leave you wanting more. Developer Polyarch evidently listened to previous criticism, so it at least doesn't end on a total cliffhanger this time, but there's definitely space left for a follow-up too. Quill's goal is to find the glass shard she needs to stop Tylan, hopping her way through a ruined castle, a garden conservatory, arctic mountains, a steel foundry, and more to do so. Of course, we all know it's never that straightforward. You'll frequently get interrupted by arcane minions blocking your path, which Quill and the reader will have to defeat in often drawn-out fight sequences. Book 2 expands the previous roster of mechanical beetle enemies with new foes, like an armored shell variant which can only be cracked open with a special weapon. There's also an unfortunate creature known as a Ripper, who the reader can fling like a pinball directly. Combat will be quite a familiar scene for anyone who played the original, but Polyarch has expanded Book 2 with a few new options. Previously, Quill only had a sword, but that returning weapon is joined by two new choices, a hammer and a chakram. Your hammer hits hard, but is slow and unwieldy, like many heavy weapons in other games. As for the chakram, it offers a quick and light approach better suited for taking out weaker enemies in large numbers. Your sword lies somewhere in between. Combat doesn't usually necessitate the use of one particular weapon or another, providing welcome flexibility that suits different combat styles. Polyarch has factored weapon abilities into platforming too, giving Quill additional powers with each. Holding down the attack button will charge her currently equipped weapon, and then physically moving your controller to touch it will let you activate its special ability as the reader. For example, the sword lets Quill dash across gaps that a standard jump would never make, slicing up enemies in her path along the way. The chakram can embed into walls, and then be called back like a boomerang to hit otherwise out of reach obstacles. Finally, you can place a mirror image of the hammer over enemies or a switch, dropping it as the reader when necessary. The fusion of platforming and combat is really enjoyable, elevating fights beyond simply swinging a sword and making you think about solving its puzzles more creatively. The reader has their own abilities too, interacting with Quill as a separate character in this world, one she's fully aware of. That can be simple tasks like triggering Quill's special attacks as previously mentioned, or more hands-on jobs like moving blocks and dragging enemies onto switches by using the DualShock controller's gyro sensor to point at them. You can also create climbable vines in certain spots, or drag others across the screen to create bridges, giving you inventive new methods to overcome these challenges. Puzzle solving is cleverly used to build up your relationship with Quill too. Book 2 focuses more on your interactions with her, like seeing her pretend to surf as we move a platform she's standing on, or a quick high five. It's one of Book 2's most heartwarming aspects, and there's an unexpected emotional journey to be found within these seemingly smaller moments. Being able to grow the relationship between Quill and her reader, partially through level design on its own, is a testament to its strength. Book 2 doesn't always feel fresh in those designs, though, with many of its new mechanics not arriving until you've cleared at least the first hour. It doesn't take unnecessary risks with its already successful formula, instead opting for an evolutionary approach, and that's absolutely fine. Book 2 is as pure a sequel as they come, but it didn't need to reinvent the wheel in order to give us what the first game needed most. More. This is thankfully a longer adventure than its predecessor, and it took just under six hours to complete without entirely exhausting its search for collectible fragment scrolls. Unfortunately, this sequel also feels held back by PSVR's aging tech. It might have been a revelatory headset in 2016, but six years later, with a successor on the way, it's extremely dated. It requires a DualShock 4 thanks to that controller's light bar, meaning there's no option to use the PS Move controllers or the PS5's DualSense if you've opted to play through backwards compatibility. The DualShock controls feel fine when moving Quill around each level, but direct interference as the reader is a different matter. Using the DualShock lacks the immersion provided by full motion controls that VR thrives in. Admittedly, something the PS Move controllers aren't comparatively very good at. 
PlayStation camera's field of view also proved limiting as grabbing objects that were further out didn't always track accurately, an infrequent but frustrating issue when it occurred. It's still entirely functional, but it's hard to escape the feeling that Book 2 occasionally had to compromise its design around these limitations. Here's hoping the PSVR exclusivity comes to an end before too long, like it eventually did for the first Moss. Book 2 at least still feels polished, and Polyarch clearly put significant detail into this world despite the constraints, telling its story through a mix of in-game moments and storybook cutscenes you can flip through at your own pace. Like before, Moss's audiobook-esque approach to voice acting is a delight, with the narrator putting on different voices for other characters while still being recognizably them. Together, we can accomplish anything, said Quill, looking up to her reader. It's a charming approach, capturing the mood of Book 2's more emotional segments very well. This sequel also boasts greater visual variety, both thematically and in design. Every world is well-detailed and wonderfully colorful, making full use of the third-person gameplay to explore levels with a 360-degree view. This isn't something that could be easily replicated in a non-VR game, and it always felt worth it to get up off the couch and hunt around using your VR headset to search each level for hidden secrets. Moss Book 2 is an exemplary sequel that provides more of what was great about its predecessor. Building upon the original with new weapons, clever puzzles, and a vibrant storybook setting, the premise remains entertaining four years later even if those additions don't truly try to innovate on it too much. Its exclusive availability on the PSVR's now noticeably outdated tech holds it back more than anything else, so hopefully it'll jump to PC or Quest in the coming months. But even with the DualShock 4 in hand, revisiting this fairy tale world is still a wonderful time. For more, check out our review of the first Moss, or watch the developers react to a speedrun of it. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.